learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. Before I get started in today's video, I wanted to show you something. I said in a previous video that you can incinerate your waste, uh, and it's legal. You can actually buy an incinerator toilet, but we do it manually, and the way we do it is we use this barrel. It's a burn barrel. Now, you see the big hole in here. I mean, I was going, if I had to buy a barrel, I would cut a hole that large. Maybe not quite as high, but this happened to be sitting on the property. It was perfect. I already had a hole in it, and it was exactly what I needed. So what you do is you, you just fill this full of branches. And I'm going to show you my branches here in a second. And then you can light that on fire, and then you can incinerate your waste. I heard a lot of people complain in the comment section that it stinks too bad to burn your waste. But this thing just sucks air in and pushes it out. It sounds like a jet engine when it's, it really gets going. It, it's makes a noise and the fire is just shooting out of there. The key is, is you don't want smoke. You just want fire. And within seconds, maybe a minute, uh, the waste is it's completely gone. Don't just stick it in a barrel and, with the rest of your trash and, and hope that it's gonna incinerate. It won't, and it will stink. Now, as I said in the title, they're requiring that I work harder uh, before I can live off grid. So in order to give you some context, I wanna show you around a little bit. When we first got here, Carolyn and I worked our hind sides off trying to get this place cleaned up. It was absolute just disaster. Over here, we had a, a, an old mobile home that we had to get cleaned up, and we felt like that if we got that cleaned up, the neighbors wouldn't complain about what we're doing down here, which I didn't think they would complain anyways. I mean, we looked into regulations quite a bit. Sure enough, I mean, everybody took notice uh, around the neighborhood that this was getting cleaned up. This place has been sitting here since 1975 with nobody doing anything on it. Now, one of the reasons we kind of slowed down during the summer was Caroline got really, really sick. She got dehydrated and she was getting dizzy and different things. And, but she dehydrated herself for so long that it damaged her kidney. Now, apparently kidneys are easy to, to repair itself. They repair themselves quite well. But in the meantime, I really had to think about safety. Uh, I wanted to get her better before I went back out to work because if I'd have hurt myself, let's, and that's easy to do, I mean, uneven terrain everywhere. It's just, you know, people came through here driving through their four by fours and different things. So, you know, I got to fix all that up. I got to clean all that up so it's safer. So, I, you know, I've twisted my ankle twice, broke my toe. So it's easy to do around here. So, you know, I got to fix all that and make it safer. Now, as I was showing you, I also spent quite a bit of time cutting firewood 
and we have this huge stack of branches now that we get to use for our incinerator. And now I'm also going to get Carolyn an oven, an electric oven, one without a window. I'll build an outdoor oven for her so she can cook. She cooks right now with this and she can cook in the oven. We'll put a flame up underneath it and I'm going to show you how to do that as soon as I can find an oven. I don't want to pay a lot of money for an oven. I don't want one that's working. So maybe I can find a scrap yard or something that will give me an oven or I can find someone that's got one. They don't know how to get rid of it. I'll take it, but it can't have a window in it. Now, one of the things I need to get done here is get all this cleaned up because I really want to get this area for firewood. As you can see underneath all these tarps here, I got four cords of wood there. And I got a little bit more than one cord there. So I got five and, I don't know, quarter cords of firewood that I got done so I can get through this winter. But I got to get this cleaned up because this winter I'm going to get started back up to working. I mean, right now it's just too dangerous with the snakes and the copperheads. So I mean, I'm going to fill this up completely with firewood. My goal is, is that I have enough that when I get into my 70s, I don't have to work so hard at firewood. You know, maybe I can just make it the rest of my life if I get enough firewood here that I can never have to cut firewood again, or, you know, just cut one tree down each year and work through it the entire year, you know, cut a log, split a log, you know, I don't have to work really hard at it. Now, originally, I was gonna put the solar panels in this area, but I've decided against that because of the firewood. The other thing I gotta do is I gotta clean this overgrowth up. This is all new growth. This has happened, I would say, within the last 15, 20 years. If I look at Google Maps, Street View, the picture was taken in 2009. And this wasn't that overgrown. But as I was saying, the place is very unsafe. Uh, the other day, one of the church people came by and they wanted to give us some food. And I asked them to give it to some, a family in need. I mean, it was quite a bit of you know, vegetables and oranges and all kinds of food, broccoli. And I asked him to give it to somebody else that was in need, but he came down on the property and I stopped him and said, hey, hey, stop there. It's just too dangerous. He'd have tripped and twisted an ankle or broke a leg. We got all the metal from the trailer sitting here. You know, let's come up and scratch himself. Uh, I'm gonna have a junk dealer come by this fall and get this. We don't want him to come and get it now because there might be copperheads in there and then he gets bit. So there's a lot more work that needs to be done here. So my goal is, is once it starts to cool off, like today, I was able to go down and cut some wood down there at the park. So in a previous video, I was telling you that the city park has a downed tree. So this morning I was able to go down there. It was cool enough that I could work for about an hour and cut some of it up, bring it back up. The thing about when you go someplace else, like public like that, is you don't want to cut too much at one time because if you, you cut it up and you get more than a truckload, Somebody will come by and pick up the, whatever's laying on the ground. Then this winter, I'm going to get started back on cutting firewood. I'm going to hit it hard and heavy. Of course, there's going to be a few days that I got to stop and do the chores. I still got to work on a tiny house. So about three or four days a month, I'm going to have to work on that. So, but things are going to pick right back up. You got to remember, we tried to get as much done cleaning this place up before summer hit. If you can only imagine, actually I had a subscriber comment in an older video how much we had gotten done she was absolutely surprised by the amount of work that we got done because when we got here just imagine all the the entire property had weeds that tall and now we've got it all cleared off it's much better but there's still a lot to do right here right around the well i gotta get all that cleaned up but it, right now it's just unsafe to really to really do anything wow look at that guy i wonder if he bites now you know why I'm not going out in the woods right now. <laughs> so it's, it's funny how the subscribers kind of react to my videos over time. When I first got here, I was really out of shape. If you want to get out of shape, do nomad life for three years. Man, I mean, you can barely do anything. So it took me a good month to get back into shape and where I could actually stay out for extended periods of time, more than 10 minutes at a time. So everybody's really excited about how all the work we're getting done. And then Carolyn got sick. And then I was criticized that I'm working too hard. You're gonna kill yourself. You need to slow down, slow down, take care of yourself. What are you doing? So I went from being lazy to now I'm working everybody too hard. And of course, of the criticism I got because I made Carolyn sick. Well, now that we've slowed back down, 
so we can get healthy again and be ready for this winter. Oh, you're lazy. You never do any work. All your videos are just about you yapping about something that doesn't matter about anything. And just and I actually had one guy say, I get on YouTube to watch people work. So you need to start working. <laughs> there is a process. And for us to just go around killing ourselves, because you think off-grid is about coming out and, and killing yourself every day. Uh, it's not. I, I live here because I want to be free. And I can assure you that all the YouTubers that you're telling me about, they aren't working that hard during the summer either. Most everybody will cut firewood in the wintertime. So I hope I can encourage you to find peace in your life so you don't have to work every day. Thanks for watching.